Hello friends, welcome to this series on Microsoft Excel. From this video, I'm starting a new series which will focus on one of the most important function pack that we have in Microsoft Excel and that is the lookup functions. So in lookup functions, we'll see first of all what is VLOOKUP, then HLOOKUP, then XLOOKUP, then there is also a simple function known as lookup function and then we will see the index and match function. So please stay tuned to this whole series and one by one you can watch these videos and definitely you will have a good overview on these various lookup functions because these functions are very much used in the industry. You will get a lot of benefit out of this. So let us first of all start in this video on the VLOOKUP. We'll understand what is VLOOKUP, what is the syntax of VLOOKUP, what are the important things that we have to see in the VLOOKUP and we'll also see the practical part of all these lookup functions. So let us start. So here, first of all, we'll see the definition of VLOOKUP. So the VLOOKUP function in Microsoft Excel is a lookup and reference function that helps you search for a value in the first column of a table and return a related value from another column in the same row. So VLOOKUP function is a part of the lookup functions group. And in this function, what we'll do that we will first of all search one value in the first column of the table and then whatever the value we want to have in return that we will get it from the main table with the help of the vlookup function vlookup the full form is vertical lookup it looks down a column to find a value and then pulls information from another column in that row so why it is known as vlookup that we'll see also practically now the syntax of vlookup the syntax of vlookup is very simple it equal to vlookup bracket lookup value now what is lookup value that is the value you want to search so let's say I want to search product ID, product code, employee ID, customer ID, name, etc. So this is the lookup value that I want to search. Then comes the next uh, argument is table array. So what is table array? The table array means the range of cells containing the data that is the lookup table. So we'll also have main table. It is also known as lookup table. And in that table, I'll be selecting the whole table where I'll be searching a particular value. So the lookup value must be in the first column of this range. We'll also talk about in the another video, we'll talk about the what are the various rules that you have to follow while using the VLOOKUP function because this is very, very important. You cannot just ignore those rules and go with this VLOOKUP because if you ignore the rules, then definitely you will have errors. So we'll see those VLOOKUP rules in a separate video. So table array means the table which is containing all the values and that is also known as a lookup table then we have the third argument which is known as column index number so the column index number means here we have to write down the column number in the table from which we want to return the value so suppose if i want to get the value from the second column then i write down the column index number equal to two if i want to get it from the third one then i have to write down the column index number equal to three so the final argument in the vlookup is the range lookup so in the range lookup, though it is optional, but in the range lookup, we can either write here false if you want to have the exact match and we can write here true if we want to have the approximate match. Now, what is this exact match approximate match that I'll be discussing in the practical part. So these are the four arguments in the VLOOKUP function. Three arguments are compulsory and the last argument is optional. So now here, let us see the practical example. So here we are having a table. The table is having employee ID, then first name, last name here we have to get it. Department also empty and the period is also empty here. Now to fill up this table, we are having another main table, which is known as master employee list table. So in the master employee list table, we are having here employee ID, last name, first name, department, their email ID. Now see in the email ID, I've just taken the initial portion. Yeah, whatever is written after at the rate that I have removed because mostly in the companies, they are all common. So I've taken the initial part of the email address, phone extension, location, high date and the pay rate. Now, this is the main table or you can also say that this is the lookup table. And from this table, I want to fill up this small table. Now, see, whenever I'm going with the manual method, then what we do normally here that I take this employee ID, which is 1054. Then I go to the master employee list sheet. And then in the first column, you can see that we are having the employee ID column. So in the first column, 
I will search here where is 1054 employee ID. So I can see that the employee ID is over here in the first row and now in the first row or I would say second row according to Excel. So in the second row here we are having the employee ID 1054 and then if I want to know his or her last name then last name is written in the second column here so that is Smith. So I remember this Smith word. I come to this VLOOKUP function sheet and I write down here Smith. Now this is the manual process. Remember this thing. Now similarly, I can also get the department and the pay rate for this employee ID 1054. Now similarly, I can also do the same manual process for all these employee ID numbers. But remember that here we are having a very small table. But let us assume that we are having a table which is consisting of let's say 10,000 record and we want to fill up the whole table. Then definitely it will be a very tedious process if we go with the manual system. So now here we'll be using the VLOOKUP that is vertical lookup. So what is vertical lookup over here? Vertical lookup also is going with the same process that I've done just now. So first of all, it takes this number 1054. Then it goes to the master employee list sheet. And here in this sheet, it will search that 1054 in the first column that is employee ID column. And then as soon as it's find here 1054, then it goes horizontal. And then suppose if you say, OK, please give me the last name of this 1054 employee ID, then it will give the last name here, which is available in the second column. Or if you want to have the first name, then it will give the first name as Howard or department or email, whatever you want to have. So it will return this value and then it will type that value over here so this is how the VLOOKUP function works so now let us type here in this cell that is known as D32 in this D32 cell I type here equal to VL now see normally I don't write down the full function name I just write down the initials because it is possible that I may commit some spelling mistake so I write down here equal to VL press tab and now one by one we have to write down the argument now see whenever you are learning this lookup functions for the first time then I would strongly suggest you that instead of writing directly these arguments in the bracket you can use this FX button here so you'll see that how it is easy to write with this FX. So after writing here equal to VLOOKUP bracket, you click here FX. So when I click on this FX button here, then I get this dialog box here. So in this dialog box, we are having here lookup value, table array, column index number and range lookup. So whatever the argument that we were having here in this bracket, the same arguments we are also getting over here. First of all, it is asking you the lookup value. Now what is the lookup value? Lookup value is this one. That is this 1054 because we will be taking this lookup value we will be going to the table array the main table or the lookup table there will be searching this 1054 and then we will say in return that okay please give me the last name or first name or department or email id so here the lookup value i'll be selecting this cell that is known as b32 so i click here b32 so b32 is over here now comes the table array so if i click inside this box of table array then what I have to do now, I have to go to that particular sheet. That is the master employee list sheet. I click on the master employee list sheet. So now you see that here, as soon as I go to the another sheet, here the sheet name is written in the table array. That is master employee list sheet. Here, what I have to do, I have to select the whole table. So if you want to select the whole table, then you have to start with this first cell here. You can select this first cell that is A1 cell. And now there are two methods which I want to show you here if you want to select the whole table. First of all, you can select this one cell, A1 cell, and then you can press Ctrl plus A, the shortcut key Ctrl plus A. So I press here Ctrl plus A, and now you see here that the whole table is now selected. Very easy. And here it is written A1 colon I38. It starts from A1 cell. And what is I38? I38 is this last cell over here in this table. That is where it is written here dollar $10.15. So that is I38. So this is one method. Let me remove this portion A1 colon I38. Now what is the second method here that if I want to select the whole table, I can select this cell that is A1 cell. And then I have to go for two shortcut keys. First of all, I have to press here control shift and down arrow key. You press what? Control plus shift plus down arrow key. In your keyboard, you are having the up arrow, down arrow, left arrow, right arrow. So first of all, you have to press here control plus shift plus down arrow key. So now you can see here that the whole column is selected. The first column, which is our employee ID column, it is selected. Now see, we don't want to select just one column. We want to select the whole table. So after pressing the shortcut key control plus shift plus down arrow key, now I have to press here another shortcut key that is control shift and right arrow key. 
control plus shift plus right arrow key. so now you see that the whole table is now selected now see here also you can go in this manner also that first of all you can select here a1 cell and then after selecting the a1 cell you can also press first of all control shift and right arrow key and then you can press control shift and down arrow key so you can go in any combination first of all either you select here the whole column the first column and then you select all the columns on the right hand side or you select here the first cell a1 cell and then you press the control shift and right arrow key so this first row is selected by pressing the control plus shift plus right arrow key and then you can press here control plus shift plus down arrow key so then it will select all these records here so any method is fine so now here you can see that in the table array I'm having here two times master employee list, master employee list. Now see, this is wrong. Okay, you should have only one time the name of the sheet. So I will remove this master employee list sheet one time because we have to keep it only once here. Okay, it has to have an exclamation mark. So only one time, remember this point that you have to only have one time this sheet name, master employee list, exclamation mark, and then we are having here A1 colon I38 because we are taking the range here. That's why it is kept here in between colon. So table array is done. Now I can click on here column index number. Now see column index number. Now what is the column index number that I have to mention that okay from which column I want to have the return value. So once I go to this master employee list sheet. So see now what I want to have in the return. I want to have the last name of this employee ID 1054. So in the column index number, you see that now once I come back to the master employee list sheet, now see that sheet name is written. But remember that in the column index number, we should not have any sheet name. Very, very important. In column index number, we should not have any kind of sheet name. We have to just write down here the number. So see, we want to have the last name as a return value. So what is the column index number of the last name column? It is number two. See, the employee ID column is the first column. The last name column is the second column. First name column is the third column and so on. So what we want to have in return, we want to have the last name. So here the column index number will be two because I want to get it from the second column here. We are writing here only the three arguments. Look up value table array and column index number is two because I want to have in return the last name. So here you can see that we are already having the answer that is Smith. Now see, even though I have not written here anything in the range lookup, but still I'm getting here the answer Smith. Now what is this range lookup here? If I click on this inside the box range lookup, so what it says here, range lookup is a logical value to find the closest match in the first column sorted in ascending order equal to true or omitted. Find an exact match equal to false. Now see what is this exact match and approximate match. So first of all, in this video, I'll be talking about the exact match. And then in the next video, I'll be talking about the VLOOKUP function with the approximate match. So let us understand what is this exact match. See exact match means that here, in the cell D32, I want to know the last name of this employee ID 1054. I'm very focused that I want to know the last name of employee ID 1054. I'm not interested in 1055 or 1056 over here. So if you want to get these kind of names okay, or get these kind of information for a particular employee ID or customer ID, then you have to go for the exact match. So here, if you want to write down here exact match, then what you can do, you can write down here false. False is equal to exact match. So I write down here false. If you write down false here, also it is written false. See, even if I have not written false also, still I was getting the answer Smith. But now I'm writing here false, still the answer is same, Smith. Because we are already having the last name of the 1054 employee ID. Either you can write down here false for exact match or you can also write down here zero. If you type here zero, then still it will be considered as false. If you want to have the approximate match, then you have to write down here true. Or if you don't write anything, then also by default, it will be approximate match, which is true. But what is this approximate match that I'll be explaining you in the next video. So I'm writing here range lookup equal to zero because I want to have the exact match for this employee ID 1054. And now you see that I have filled up this whole dialog box. And now I have to click here OK button. Once I click here OK button, I'm getting here Smith. So this is ready. Now I can drag the formula down. You see, when I drag the formula down, then here I'm having here NA. Why I'm having here NA? Because here there are no numbers. So there are no employee ID. So definitely it will be showing you NA, NA, NA. Let me put here one number and I want to see that whether I'm getting here the last name or not. So suppose if I write down here again that same number that is 1054. Okay, 1054 is already here, but here also I want to write down again the employee ID. 1054 and then I want to see here that in this D40 cell I want to see here the last name as Smith. 
So here in this cell, that is B40, I'll be typing again that number 1054, press enter. You see here, I'm already getting the first name Howard Howard. Here, I'm not getting that last name Smith. See here, there is a formula. If I double click here, this cell, that is D40. If I double click, I'm getting here the formula. So formula is there, but still, what is the problem? I'm getting no value. Why? So let us understand from here, from this cell that is D32, if I double click here, the formula is written equal to VLOOKUP bracket B32, comma master employee list, that's the sheet name. And then what is this? This is the table array, A1 colon I38. And two is the column index number and zero is the range lookup. So here you focus on this range that is A1 colon I38. Now when I go to this Gonzalez, if I double click this cell, which is written Gonzalez as the last name, you see, I think this is fine, but then here the range has shifted. Now the range is A2 colon I39. Now you must have seen my video on the relative reference, absolute reference and mixed reference. If you have not seen this video, then please watch this video. I'm putting the link on the top of this video and you will understand what is this uh, reference is. So here what is happening that when I'm dragging the formula down, then here by default, I'm having the relative reference. Here in the Smith cell, I'm having here the range A1 colon I38. But when I go to Gonzalez, the range becomes A2 colon I39. When I go to Scott, it becomes A3 colon I40. So the range is changing. Now see, I don't want to change the range because see this table is common for all these employee IDs. So the range should not change. The range should be always A1 colon I38. So now what we have to do, we have to here in this formula, which I've written here in the cell D32, where I've written here master employee list sheet A1 colon I38. Now this I want to fix. Okay, we want to go for the absolute reference here. So what we can do here, we can click here in between this A1 and then I have to press here F4 key. You see, as soon as I press here F4 key on my keyboard, I get here dollar a dollar one. Similarly, I click over here in this I38 and then I press F4 key and now you see that the range is absolute. That is dollar a dollar one colon dollar i dollar 38. I press enter. So see the answer is same Smith. But now when I drag the formula, I'm now getting here Smith. If I click here in this second Smith, that is the D40. If I double click here, you see the range is still the same. That is dollar a dollar one colon dollar i dollar 38. So this is how we work with the absolute reference here. This is very, very important in the VLOOKUP. If you don't put the absolute reference, if you drag the formula down, it will go for the relative reference. This is how we are using the VLOOKUP here. Similarly, you can also go for here the department. You can get here the department. What you have to do here, the formula will be same like this for the last name. Only what will change here, the column index number. For the last name, the column index number was two. What will be the column index number for department? If I go to this main table, the department column index number is four. And if I want to get the pay rate, then the pay rate column index number is nine. You can count here the numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So only I have to change that number. The rest thing is same. So you can do on your own. Yeah, you can take this example here and you can calculate here. You can bring here the department for this employee ID 1054. Just change the column index number here. For department, the column index number will be four. And for the period, the column index number will be nine. Rest, everything will be same. So friends, here in this video, I have discussed about the VLOOKUP function and we have gone for the concept known as VLOOKUP with the exact match. Now in the next video, I'll be talking about VLOOKUP function, but with the approximate match. So let us see that how the approximate match and the exact match differs. And in which situation we should go for the approximate match, in which situation we should go for the exact match. So please stay tuned for the next video and see you then. Thank you very much.